Hey guys, hello and welcome to another Divi Engine tutorial. My name is Roby and today I'm going to show you how to build a mega menu right into your Divi WordPress site. Now you'll see the mega menu we'll be building on the screen right now. And you're going to see that we're utilizing the Divi Builder to build it. It's super easy to do and without keeping you on the line, let's get right into it. Now the first thing we need to do is log into the back end of our Divi site and make sure that the mega menu plugin has been installed and activated. Once we're there, we're going to go over to Divi Engine on the left here and Mega Menu. When we're here, we're going to click on Add New. And then we'll add a descriptive title. Let's just say Mega Menu, oops, Menu Demo. And then after that, we'll see that it generates a custom identifier for you on the right hand side here. Now, good practice is to add something like DMM underscore for Divi Mega Menu, just to make sure that we can identify that throughout the site. And, you know, usually it's a good idea to say where you're going to be putting this. But for demo purposes, we're going to keep it this way. Now, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and activate the Divi Boulder. And I will think for a second. And then when it gets there, it'll ask us how we want to start out. And we're going to say build from scratch. Now the first thing we'll do is that we're going to add those three column row. And then to the first row, we're going to add a blurb module. Now, just really quick, you know, we, we've got this great blog article where we talk a little bit more about, you know, how and why you want to add a Divi Mega menu and as well as some options how to add it to your site without, you know, needing to purchase the third party plugin gets a little bit technical um, doing it that way, but you know, a plugin is definitely the easiest way to do it. And there's also an example of the Evernote site where um, we kind of take a look at how they put it together. Mega menus are great for sites that have a lot of content. Um, and, and you know, generally on e-commerce sites, this is very popular on blogs where you can go and hover over an item and see a bunch of different uh, categories maybe, maybe the most recent posts or most popular products, that type of thing. So it's very useful for those purposes. So anyway, I digress. Going back to this, um, let's take a quick look at this blurb. So the, for the first thing we're going to add is a phones category. And what this is going to do, it's going to link to the phones category page within our uh, install. Uh, now on this site, I don't have WooCommerce installed, but you know, for demonstration purposes, we're going to do it this way. Um, I'm also just going to move this over a little bit and activate the visual builder. So there we see the phones. And then we're going to go down to image and icon and we're going to use an icon here. And then we'll scroll down and find a complementary phone icon. Boom, there we got it. Now, here's where you'd add the link to your um, actual phones category within your WooCommerce shop if you have that. Uh, might be a different thing, might be you know, it could be anything, it could be your most recent blog post, whatever you want, you can link this to. Um, it, it's This is for demonstration purposes, so use your imagination on this one. Now, next we go to the design tab. And you're on the design tab, we're gonna go for title text, we're gonna change the font, we like to use Poppins for our demonstrations, and then we're gonna center that, great. And then we will also utilize our purple color and the color code for that is 5430CE but I have it in my recent so I'm just going to go ahead and select that you see it adjust immediately and we also want to go up to our image and icon yet so we want to change the icon color to be white and it disappears there for a second but we'll add the circle icon and then we'll again utilize that purple color to show like that. Now another thing that we're going to want to do here for this is under the content section before I go on is to add a background color but only for when we hover on it to get that hover effect that we saw in the preview. So we click on the hover button here and then for the background color we will select our recent color and we're going to use that green color that we have. And now that we have that, we can go back to design, we go back to the title text, and same as we did for the hover background color, we're gonna change the hover color to white, 
when we hover over that phone section. And the spacing there is a little bit off, so we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of spacing here. If we go down to spacing options, we'll add 25 pixels feels good. We'll add it to the bottom as well, so we just link these two up. So that's already looking pretty good. So that's all we need to do with this. Now, to save ourselves time, let's copy this blurb a couple times and then drag one into each of the columns here. Why, why did you go over there? But anyway, there we are. Now, all we need to do to move on is to change the second one to tablets. And we will just give it an appropriate icon as well. So we'll go down, we'll select tablet. Boom, that looks good. And then the last one, we're gonna say, oops, laptops. And go down again to the icon. Oh, come on. There we go. Select the laptop here and say, okay. Awesome, looking good so far. Now, moving on, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna quickly add some settings to the row and to the section here. So the first thing we want to do for this row to kind of stand out a little bit is that we'll give it a background color. And I'm using the code F7, F7, F7. Gives it a light gray color. It's just going to make it stand out a little bit more from the rest of the stuff that's going on on the page. We also want to make sure that in the design section, you see the padding at the top here. We don't want that there. So we're going to firstly minimize the space between the two over well, the three columns and we're going to change the gutter width to one and you kind of see how they move together there and then we're going to go down to spacing and we will be adding some top and bottom spacing while well, removing top and bottom spacing and you see how it kind of pulls it all together there much easier looks better every move we make so now that we have that in place, we can just click the checkbox and we're going to add another row because we're going to add that promo bar on the bottom. And we're going to go ahead and we will select a single column row. And then what we're going to do is firstly add a text module. That's a lot of stuff in there, but we're just going to add the text and let our customers know that they will get free shipping on all orders over, oops, over. $125. That looks good. And then we're going to set a background. Well, not for the text, actually. We'll do that in a second. We'll go to design here. We will select our favorite font, Poppins. And we will go set this to an ultra bold setting. And we will make sure that that text is white. It will disappear momentarily. We will set the size to 28. And then we're going to add a text shadow, the first option here. Now we can see it again. And then lastly, we want to center that text. Perfect. And now we will go to the actual row settings of the row we just created. And we're going to add a background image to it. If I can select it here. There we go. Background. And the background image is linked in the description as well as in the blog article but I have mine already uploaded here and I am using this black keyboard and that looks pretty good. You can see it nicely. The text pops off the page and just kind of it's got that cool element. I like it. Now for the section settings, we're going to need to reduce some padding. We also want to make sure that this section has a blank background color. Otherwise that color is going to come through on the main page and it's just going to look a little bit strange. So we want to go to the design settings for that spacing issue. And we'll just set all the, the padding and the margins and everything to zero. So we've got a nice, solid, compact layout. Now that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and publish this one. And now the design of our mega menu is almost done. So let's take a look at what that does. That goes saved. Now the next step is we need to somehow link this mega menu to our header menu that we have on the page. Now, within the Divi mega menu plugin, you can apply your mega menus in different ways. And when you scroll down here, 
it tells you, you know, menu position. And we've got two. We've got tooltip and default menu. Now, tooltip is when you hover over a button or something on the page, and that will display your mega menu. And you can, you know, utilize this layout to do that. For this one, we're just going to stick to the default menu, which is the one that is at the top of the page. And now we want to make sure that it displays there. So this is why we're going to copy the custom identifier. And we need to go to Appearance and then the Menu section. Now, you might have a menu in there already. If you don't, go ahead and create one and assign it as your primary menu on the page. Now, for this tutorial, we're going to add another custom link. And for, the, for, for this, it needs to be a custom link. So we're going to go ahead and just add a hash just to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. And then for the link text, we will say Products and add it. And we'll just put it in the middle here. Now, one thing you need to make sure you do here is you have to go and enable CSS classes. And to do that, you go to Screen Options, and you select the CSS Classes checkbox here, and you just close that out. And then when you go down here, you'll see this CSS Classes option has been added. This is where you paste your custom identifier. So paste that in there, and then you hit that Save button. Great. So now, I'm going to go to my pages here and just let's preview what we've done here and just open uh, this one on the front end. Now up here, here we see our mega menu. It looks great, but you know, it's kind of getting lost in the background here, you know, um, and we have a fantastic solution for that. Um, also, another thing is when you click, you can click on that top menu item, which kind of makes stuff go out of place here. We want to prevent that, and we want to make it pop more on the page. So that is easy to do. And Mega Menu actually has a bunch of settings in there that helps you control that. So the first thing we're going to do is go to the Mega Menu settings here. To stop that click through, the ability to click on that parent menu link, we just check this box. And to make our background kind of have this nice overlay, and we're just using a black background with a 65% opacity. Um, we'll save that, and then we'll go back and refresh the page. Okay, so now with the page refreshed, and now we see this awesome overlay, our menu stands out a little bit more. So the users are not getting lost on the page. This is highlighted. It has the nice hover effect and all that fun stuff. And now if you added your link, you can click through to the categories. Yeah, guys, and that's it. We have a mega menu created. Looks awesome, it's functional. Now, this is to serve as some brain food for you to think about how different ways you can incorporate mega menus into your site, how easy it is to utilize the Divi Builder, and at the cheap price of this plugin, you know, it's almost a must have for any Divi site that you're building, be it e commerce or a blog. So, with that, guys, that's all from me. My, again, my name is Roby, you're from the Divi Engine team with an awesome tutorial on mega menus. I'll catch you guys in the next video.